so many of us have aurora borealis or chasing aurora borealis in our bucket list but how about painting that with watercolors if you are someone who has struggled to paint aurora borealis at some point in time today i am going to spill all my secrets about getting a beautiful aurora borealis Hi guys, I am Ruthi Karanath, an artist, instructor, mother, brand owner of Vibrant Parcels, where we manufacture handmade sketchbook, artist weight paints, and much more. You can find a weekly video on YouTube. You can also follow my full classes on Skillshare, as well as on my own channel, www.vibrantparcels.com, under the courses section. Let us discuss our colors. It is May Green, Ultramarine, Indon Green, Blue, Paints Grey and Neutral Tint. My Paints Grey is a bit more bluish in shade. That's one of the reasons I'm using this Paints Grey. If you do not have a Paints Grey like this, you can always go ahead with Indigo. Going ahead and masking out some of the area where I would be adding the mountain or the hilly part as well as a bit of the lake. The reflection of the sky will fall into the lake. I have added a layer of water on top of my sky and now I am going ahead with my lightest value which is uh, May Green. Adding some of the darker values of the May Green in some of the places and lighter value in some of the other places. Making those dancing lights dance in the sky is something that I have always, always loved to add in my painting. Adding one more streak towards the right and then we will add some amount of our Indon Train Blue to just blend it. Though I can see because of the weather and this year it's been very, very hot. So the colors are drying up very quickly and there is a lot more work that we are doing to blend it well compared to what I have usually seen during the other times of the year. I will apply more water so that I don't get these uneven lines. When you are starting out with watercolors, you will see that these kind of lines do happen in any kind of watercolors that you try to work on. It does happen even with me till date if there is not enough amount of water on the paper. I will go ahead and apply some more water as I move from the bottom towards the top area and then keep adding some more blue as you observe over here. I'm using my Aquatone soft brush or else you can also use your um, any of the other brushes of mop brush or maybe a round brush size 6 that can also work well. As I have added good amount of water now my colors have started flowing and the flow of colors is very important when you are working on dancing lights. Dancing lights or auroras usually change their shape, color, etc. at every point in time. I mean it's like every second you will see some other lights moving here and there and they continuously dance in the sky. We should let our water also play a great role in these dancing lights. I will continue to add some more water so that it looks very organic and there is an even blend of colors wherever I am adding the greens as well as the blue. I will add some amount of my uh, beautiful paints gray which is a bit bluish in shade towards the right as well as towards the top area. You will see that I will use my board and make it move to a great extent so that the colors also move on its own and I do not need to do much work with my brush. If you continue to do a lot of work with your brush, what will happen is that this even blend of shades which you observe over here will be difficult to attain and that's one of the reasons i always say that water has a great role in watercolors the name water comes first compared to colors the reason is that water is the major um, i would say uh, player in the whole watercolors pigments has less role to play compared to waters and the kind of um, way you can add water and pigment together and the 
dance that they create the look that they finally uh, have you cannot control water that's one thing which i have realized so let it do its job if you are unable to get the same kind of effect you will get some effect which will look very beautiful so do not be restricted by the fact that you need to get something absolutely similar it's fine the final outcome that you have will look great because these are happy accidents that you might come across when it comes to watercolors i would just add a bit more of my darker value towards the top area as i see the colors are um, not moving much anymore and uh, there is uh, just a very uh, uneven blend so some more of the greens um, is very important at this stage you can have a closer look at it and always always keep um, your sides uh, clear or else there will be backgrounds and we do not want any backgrounds in our painting done with my sky now it's time to let it dry off completely before i um, start with the bottom area you can see that my sky has dried off at least one layer lighter than what uh, we did add initially the reason is we have done wet on wet if you are using any professional grade watercolors you will get one shade lighter if you're using student grade watercolors then it might be two to three shade lighter my water is already blue and i'm using the same light blue color it really doesn't matter because it's a small space that i need to occupy for the lake and then go ahead with my green color as you see over here to show the reflection into the water area i'm covering the entire space slowly steadily i will work with the blue and create um, the darker values wherever it is needed this is the indontrine blue if you do not have this particular shade with you you can also use prussian blue i think uh, both are quite similar but uh, indontrine blue gives a better outcome in terms of the mix which i get but i would leave that decision up to you i feel most important aspect in watercolor is to paint bring your brushes paints together every day and have a outcome that may not be very pleasing which is okay but still you need to have a final beautiful painting for yourself and it really um helps me to have calm down my mind to a great extent if i am under stress i do get relief to a great extent after painting and slowly steadily this really helps me to have um, something that makes my day very beautiful continuing to just blend the colors towards this um, bottom area where we have uh, added the a lake and then the dancing lights into it you can use any way to just add the darker and lighter values i'm not much concerned at this stage it's just that i'm blending the colors the colors of the sky are getting reflected into the water that's all you need to keep in mind and then add some more water brush blending greens blues that's it once this part is done we have to start working on our snow i love to always keep my paper white and i don't like to use white gouache when it is about the snow part for me white of the gouache can be used for your gouache paintings or maybe for some detailing where i need rest i guess most of the area where i go ahead and add my colors is usually the same as um, i keep it white of the paper and then start adding very very light values as you see over here then go ahead with my darker values to create the kind of smaller hills or um, smaller areas uh, which is getting reflected into the water these are basically snow laden uh, hills or uh, smaller smaller uh, mountains that come up it, we are seeing it from a distance so at this position we are not sure much i will go ahead with my very small brush to add a few lines dots here and there and just finish off this painting with uh, some of the splatters of the sky now the splatters are basically your uh, white um, 
gouache splatter. Now at this stage, I will use my white gouache just to add the stars into my sky area. That's one of my favorite activities. You will see how I go ahead and do it. I have also mixed some amount of brown into the blue and gone ahead with a bit of smaller dots here and there. My paper is still wet and that's one of the reasons I'm creating the reflection of this snow part into the water. It is very very important to always always give a reflection of uh, your uh, snow or just add the shadow of the snow into the water. I'm using a smaller brush at this stage as I wanted some smaller um, I would say stars and you can always go ahead and add some dots like this with the tip of your brush later on just to show the bigger stars. Once you remove the tape you will understand that how beautifully this whole painting has turned out. Again I will do the same process at this stage I am going all in with no drawing nothing that we are doing. We will just go ahead and start uh, applying the water on top of the paper and then start with our May green. Again the lights have to dance so I will go ahead and apply my May green. These are basically two variations of your um, similar kind of dancing lights that you see in the sky one with the pine trees and one in the mountains with the lake etc so i mean the same lights but different versions of it as i do love to enjoy or paint different versions of similar uh, lights in the sky it has um, a better outcome maybe as as i always say and more than the outcome it gives me so much more perspective about how i want to figure out a painting only going absolutely without any fear into it and just mingling it with the water colors which I have for myself. It's more to do with uh, being more fearless with watercolors. If you are fearless with watercolors, all I can say is it's going to reward you in a great way. So yes, continue to add um, colors etc into your painting and then start out with this green part blending it well um, you will see that some of the areas are still not blended well as my paper is drying up very very quickly and I'm not happy with it but I don't have much of a choice at this stage since it is the hot summer season let's continue to work on it and let's continue to add the darker lighter values add some water blend it let water play a bigger role over here I'm pretty much okay with now how my sky looks though there is might be a bit of an issue with blending which is absolutely okay if you are trying out this on a hundred percent cotton paper 300 gsm or more you will get an outcome that is similar if you are working with 25 percent cotton paper or cellulose paper you will get very very less time to work on the uh, water and colors that might give you hard edges so always always invest on good paper more than your colors etc i think investing on good paper is most important aspect in watercolors if you invest on good paper your final outcome is going to be something very amazing and uh, your final outcome will actually reward you with falling in love with watercolors. Watercolor is a medium which is uh, absolutely beautiful, rewarding 
it helps you to understand um, in greater depth and it really translates your life to a higher extent slowly and steadily most of you when you start working with watercolors you will understand these aspects let your paper dry off and then i would use my size 6 uh, this is a Scotta Optimo brush. I have been using this brush for years and now I am painting my pines over here. I will change the size shape of this pine and slowly steadily as I develop you will understand that some of them will be smaller, some of them would be larger and we continue to add them into our painting. I haven't uh, thought much about how I want to add it I'm just drawing a few lines and then slowly steadily we will develop on it this painting altogether is um, more uh, to do with uh, getting an approach to your painting and then establishing it uh, in layers as well as uh, letting go of all your fears watercolor is a medium that has to be fearless so you have to be brave enough to embrace this medium. Make it your own altogether. let everything dry off and then splatter some stars i can see that my white has become a bit blue so i'm just taking off all the extra bluish color which i observe over here and then trying to make it more white i want to keep it white so something that i want to keep for even my future paintings i will add some smaller stars or bigger stars wherever needed with the tip of my brush and you can see that we already got some bigger stars with the splatters that we have added earlier last time we did use a very um, small brush and this time we have gone ahead with bigger brush if you have liked this video do give it a thumbs up and uh, drop in your comments i go through each and every comment that you write follow me for more videos and please 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 do subscribe to my channel and ring the bell button i will see you guys next week again with a new video till then happy painting stay safe take care